Number one, we need to have more daily prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. We are using a new form of meditation in our church called consciously resting, consciously resting meditation by own Dr. Kofi Kondwani. Also, we need to look at speaking more positively. Yes. Words have power. Yes. And we have to be aware of what we're saying at all times. Read inspirational material. Many of our groups have our own daily devotional guides. We need to program our minds to read something inspirational every day of the week. Because when you begin to speak, you begin to speak from the consciousness of the level of which you have already gone through the reading of the book. Um, also, we need to sing more peace songs. That's why I like some of the music. Uh, we, we've gotten into kind of a crutch of just the same old song all the time. But there are many songs that we can do that stress uh, peace. And then I want to talk to the leaders just because Michael talked about the choir, but the choir sometimes has discords. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. We need to be the light. We need to be that peace that we speak about. Number two, we need to open our pulpits to others. Uh, in our church, we have brought in the Muslims, even many of you heard of Master Shaw, Sikong Shaw, who is Buddhist, but he brought his whole movement to our church. All the discouragements disturbed the new thought in fact he talked about um, <coughs> karma, erasing karma. But what I followed him up with was to explain to people what karma was about so they would know they were not out of place with Master Shaw. We have to learn who the movements are. We are the movement at our church because they're so orderly. So we have to learn who people are. And when your pulpit is only you all the time, and nobody comes in to bring another message, we have to be able to understand who people are. We need to do that. Conduct interfaith services. We have once a year, we do services. We bring in people from all around the city of Atlanta from various religious backgrounds so that we can learn who they are. Never forget the uh, president of the International Theological Seminary in Atlanta was so impressed learning what the Jews were about, what the Muslims were about. He said as the president of the school, he didn't know anything about anybody else but the Baptist, the Methodist, the Church, God, Christ, the Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was with Reverend Beckwith, one Reverend Michael Reeves, on one occasion, he took me to a meeting of the Baha'i faith, and they were planning peace poll. I wanted to know more about the peace poll. I went all the way back to Atlanta, and find out we can have a peace We have a peace poll on our grounds with the various um, languages of, of various uh, cultures. Plan a peace poll. Get to know who your people are uh, in your community. And then we have another organization called Every Church a Peace Church. We're members of that. We have a peace garden. There are so many ways in which we can <coughs> involve ourselves so that we consciously reach out and touch others who need to know this. And then this is a real, this is a real, real one here. <coughs> Your mission statement should be broad enough to cover all people. Mm -hmm. Now, our mission statement says sexual orientation. Some people, you know, you're not quite ready for it, but you've got to know that all people are welcome in your ministry. Mm -hmm. 